Hello and welcome in my C-Sharp AWS tutorial. Last time we have added our Lambda to the VPC from the AWS console. Today I will show you how to do it using the CloudFormation template. Let me start with a quick explanation. VPC, so Virtual Private Cloud, is your zone where you can locate your services that are accessible only through AWS account, if they don't have an internet gateway or something. So you can imagine it like a box, inside of it you can locate your RDS, Lambda and so on. Your VPC can be split into three subnets, each one in a single availability zone. What an availability zone is? Amazon has its servers located all around the world in different locations. One of them is for example Frankfurt, which you can see here. AWS always builds three different server locations in each city to prevent unexpected failures. So for example, if one server room gets flooded, they can have another two available in this location. So going back to our subnets, we can create three subnets in three different availability zones. It is a good approach that AWS recommends, minimum of two subnets. Okay, so because of our RDS in the VPC, we couldn't access it from our Lambda. But there was also this security group. What exactly it is? It is like a firewall that controls the incoming and outcoming traffic. So it has defined rules to allow traffic only for these IPs or these resources. Because of that, to connect to the database, we needed to update our IP address inside the security group. Okay, I think that's it. AWS have put many efforts to make their services secure. It might be a bit overwhelming right now to understand how it works, but don't worry, it will be much easier when you're gonna create these resources. So let's go back to our code. We can go back to the serverless.template file in the database project. Inside of it, we'll create VPC, subnets and security group. Let's start with the VPC. In order to create it, we'll need to define new resource in the resources table and call it for example VPC. It will be of type AWS EC2 VPC and we only need to assign one property into it, the CIDR block. The CIDR block is generally an IP address with defined number of bits inside the mask. So we can define the IP address to 10.0.0.0 and the mask will contain let's say 16 bits. It's the default value when creating VPCs. You can allocate any value here between 0 and 32. Then we have the subnets. I will create two subnets because it is the minimal amount that is needed and the process of creating the third one is exactly the same. So we're gonna have subnet A and subnet B. The type here is set to AWS EC2 subnet. Inside the properties section, we'll define availability zone set to EU central 1A. It needs to be the same as your location where you deploy all your AWS services. We need to set of course the VPC ID, which we just created. And here we'll use function that is available in CloudFormation templates. It will be the first function that we're gonna discover. It is called ref and it references the given resource inside the same CloudFormation template. So as we here created the VPC, we can now reference it and we'll receive the ID of this VPC. It is being done inside parentheses. Then we have the CIDR block. In the subnets, we can assign 24 bits of mask to our address in order to split the available pool. What is important, the third octet needs to be different in both subnets. It will differentiate the IP addresses inside A and B subnet. If you are not familiar with networking, don't worry, it is not so important when building small applications. Now let's copy this part because subnet B will look nearly the same. What needs to be changed 
is of course the name, the availability zone needs to be the same but with this suffix and the CIDR block will contain one in the third octet. Now let's go straight into the security group. The name here is security group and it is also of type AWS EC2 but then at the end just security group. Here we can name our group to recognize it easier in case when you have more security groups created on our AWS account. It can be done by specifying the group name property. I'll name it inventory manager security group. Also, we can add a description. So here, the security group for inventory manager stack. And here, we have two important things. Security group ingress and security group egress. Imagine it like that. We have our security group in the middle and on the left are incoming requests. In the ingress section, we are specifying which of them is allowed to enter our security group. And on the right, we have outcoming requests from our services inside the security group. It is not clear that every service request can pass the security group layer. So in the egress section, we are specifying which of them are allowed to go out of the security group. So let's start with the ingress. We want to allow all incoming traffic to make it easier to connect to the database and so on. If we will have a production solution, we will define here only certain IP addresses because we don't want to give access to everyone. So to do that, we can specify a security group ingress property and inside set the IP protocol to minus one and the CIDR IP to 0000 slash 0. And it will allow all incoming traffic. And the same goes for the security group egress. Just be careful here, because the ingress and egress properties takes an array of objects. And the same as it was in subnets, the VPC needs to be linked using VPC ID and our ref function. Now, when we have our resources described, we can export them in order to use them in Lambda. We can achieve that by specifying the output section. It will allow us to export given resource outside of inventory manager resources stack. So we then can use them inside the standard stack. So in this cloud formation template where we have our Lambda described. Let's start with the name. I will call it inventory manager first subnet. Here we need to assign the description, so let's name it the inventory manager first subnet. So creative. And then the value. The value will use the ref function linking to the subnet A resource. So here. And at the end we need to create an export. So here we're gonna have the name under which we can use this resource. So by using outputs the inventory manager first subnet can be used across many different stacks. And now let's copy it for the second subnet. It will look exactly the same with the difference that it is a second subnet and the value will reference subnet B. And here the security group. So also replace all values to match security group. One thing that is missing here, we haven't assigned the newly created security group and subnets into our existing database. So without it, the database will create subnets and security groups by itself and it wouldn't work. We can achieve it by adding new resource. I will call it DB subnet group because it is of type DB subnet group. It will contain, of course, the description, so inventory manager DB subnet group. And here we'll merge the two subnets that we created into subnet IDs array. So we can go to the database that we created before and assign the DB subnet group name property with the ref function to the resource that we just created. And also we need to assign VPC security groups array with our one security group, also using the ref function. And that's it. The creation of VPC resources is finished. We can now use them. Let's go straight into the serverless template file with our Lambda. The first thing what we need to do 
without it nothing will work by the way, we need to add new policy to the policies array. It is called AWS Lambda VPC Access Execution Role. It is needed to enable communication within VPC for this Lambda. I added it in the previous video from the AWS console. And then we can create new section called VPC config. The first thing what we need to assign is the security group IDs. And you heard it right. There is an IDs at the end, so it means that we can assign one lambda into many security groups. But we have just one created, so let's use this one. In order to get it from the inventory manager resources stack, from the output section there, we need to use function fn double colon import value. It is needed to import the value from other stacks. And here, exactly the same name as in outputs, so inventory manager security group. And next, the subnet IDs. We need to create an array and inside attach two subnets following the same approach as with security group. So also using the import value function. And that's it. We can now deploy our stack and see if it's working. Unfortunately, during the deployment of the resources stack, you and I will receive an error. It's because we want to create the RDS publicly accessible in order to, for example, connect to it from management studio. But the VPC is not accessible from public. It is our private VPC and no one from the internet has access to it. So, in reality, it doesn't really meet our needs. Why it was working before when we attached the default VPC? Because the default VPC has internet gateway attached to it and is publicly accessible. So, in the next video, we're gonna modify our VPC to allow traffic from outside. We're gonna also discover how routing tables work, because it will be needed to make it happen. And also, a lot of new cool stuff. So, stay tuned and see you in the next video.